the best way to hack Microsoft could be also to use Microsoft Sign tools. Uh, we will see uh, during this talk you could uh, you will be able to do a lot of stuff with Microsoft Sign tools on Windows operating system. You will be able to get password to manipulate memory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I'm Pierre Alexandre Brecken. Welcome uh, everyone, uh, and it's. Hack Microsoft using Microsoft Sign binaries. So I'm Belgian, uh, living in Canada. I work at Deloitte in Canada as a senior security consultant and researcher. Um, I have like um, more or less 14 years experience, and I, I give previous talk at Black Hat Asia Arsenal. I presented this tool. Hackfest in Canada, in Washington DC, and my next talk will be in Montreal uh, at the North Sec. And also I'm a StarCraft 2 player, so if you want to, to play with me, ping me on Twitter or, or send me an email, or after the talk we could discuss about that. So a lot of people actually asked me why did you do that and how did you do that? So I wrote this talk to explain it. And, but the, the major thing is, since I was a child, I, I love to disassemble things, and it was not very uh, useful, but I love that. I disassemble a dishwasher machine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, yeah, I wanted to know how really Windows authentication works, uh, and I wanted to learn PowerShell and to learn about memory concepts. So the agenda is to explain what is power memory tools, uh, how you can use a debugger uh, to do all these things. Uh, we will get technical and I will explain you exactly where to find correct bytes, uh, which symbols to use to get password, what you can do with the memory and manipulate it. Um, it will be uh, uh, useful for you. Um, I will show you a real example. So weaponize these tools into, by example, PowerShell Empire to, uh, re to, to do real attacks. And then at the end of the talk, some mitigation. So what is power memory? Uh, power memory is a, power, uh, is a minesweeper solver. That's all, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it, it, can, it can manipulate the memory to um, show you how to win at this game, but it's, it's just a proof of concept to explain, okay, we can manipulate all the bytes by just using the debugger, and uh, the concept behind that is use um, PowerShell, by example, but it could be an, uh, anything else, and automate all your action with, uh, with it, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, make some automatization with uh, the debugger. So all eyes, all eyes are on PowerShell today. Uh, everybody talk about PowerShell. PowerShell is a very useful tool. Um, you have some example from Carbon Black, Tanium. You have a very useful document from Simon Tech over here, the increased use of PowerShell in attacks, uh, which contain a lot of very great uh, details about, you know, uh, use of which arguments and it's very cool. You have last year the first power, uh, shell ransomware fileless one, so it's only executed into the memory. And I did invoke Tartarus, which is uh, the same thing. So you can look on, on my GitHub. You will you will see how to do that. So just executing your ransomware into the memory. So obviously you will have your, the, the the key into the memory, but. To, to be able to reverse it, you, 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 want, to, uh, you want to get the memory uh, uh, when it uh, works, when it runs. But I think it's not, uh, it's not uh, you know, there, there are more. There are more than just using PowerShell because today, uh, as everybody look at PowerShell, uh, defenders are looking into it, and if you install PowerShell v5, you will be able to log everything. So if you if you make API call like virtual call alloc, you will be detected. And some awesome researchers like Kaze Smith or Benton, and in the Project Empire with Armjoy, uh, and I did also something. Uh, they show us okay, we we could use PowerShell, but without PowerShell. 
you know, because PowerShell is just a DLL. So you don't need to use PowerShell.exe or PowerShellEyes.exe. You can use another cool uh, thing. Uh, you can also uh, load PowerShell into msbuild.exe. Uh, you, you could uh, look at uh, all this technique on my uh, GitHub and on KZ Smith's blog and on Benton. It's very interesting. Um, so the concept here of power memory is with PowerShell and a Microsoft sign uh, debugger, so it's signed by Microsoft with a valid certificate, uh, you can actually achieve whatever you want in the user land, kernel land, and wonderland. Um, the concept is you just send bytes to the debugger, like text, it's text, and you receive bytes, that's it. And with this concept, you can do whatever you want. So you have power memory, and you have the debugger. Here it's WinDBG. Uh, it's a GUI debugger of Microsoft, but in uh, the tools I use CDB, which is the same thing, but in command line. So you can automate it. How does it work? So first, power memory calls the debugger, and it sends a command to execute. Secondly, he retrieves the bytes, then he passes them, and then for he, he sends another command, and, and et cetera, et cetera. To read or write bytes at, uh, at um, exact memory uh, position. So you have a, a server somewhere, you have poor, mem poor memory on your computer, or I don't know where, and poor memory asks for p password, by example, okay, dump this process. So the server will uh, give you back uh, the dump, and you can do it you know, remotely on a lot of servers. So you, you have to drop uh, the debugger, and if you don't, you can use a debugger which is, uh, also, which is uh, already installed if you target some Visual Studio uh, developer, by example. But if you dropped it, yes. Oh, you dropped something on the disk. Antivirus will detect it. No, because it's a, it's a Microsoft sign debugger, you know? So antivirus will just uh, so something totally legit. But if you want to dump something without being detected, uh, so basically you can, you can dump something with PowerShell directly, and you will be detected. Um, but you can also dump something with Microsoft tools because Microsoft did some very interesting tools to dump memory, and these tools are also uh, uh, digitally signed. So it's the same thing. You have a server somewhere. You have polymer, polymer, you dump it. Okay, here is my LSAS dump. But this time, I will do it with userdump.exe. And userdump.exe is a Microsoft signed tool with SHA-1, uh, signatures. And in 2008, Microsoft wrote a very cool article with all the Microsoft tools you can use to dump something into the, in the memory. So Power Memory is a user land attacker. I wrote some proof of concept uh, that show you you can get Windows password with this, from the memory with this concept. You can inject and execute the shell code without uh, calling API and you can modify the memory of a process. Um, you, with this concept, th this awesome potential, because you have just a debugger, you send it commands, you can do it with even batch if you want, and you will, you will be able to do a lot of things. Um, but Perl memory is also a kernel uh, land attacker, so with DCOM, direct kernel object manipulation, uh, you can, so, uh, basically, I made some other proof of concept to high and hide the process. By example, like a rootkit do, you can inject all privileges in the process. So basically, you, I, I will create a totally new token with system identity. You can use pass the token attack and protect the process, which is very interesting because, um, as Alex Ionescu showed us, uh, it will. Uh, give you the possibility to dump a process which is actually protected. By protecting your process, and then you are at the same level as the other process, and you will be able to dump it. Um, 
Yeah, I, I wrote some other stuff like uh, Active Directory Connect and Act Tool, which is containing this uh, tool. Uh, you can do SPN scan, etc. SPN scan is very useful because if you don't want to be detected, you won't uh, launch uh, and map, by example, inside a, a network. So if you want to find all the, uh, I don't know, SQL server in the domain, you just have to query the domain controller and say, oh, okay, give me all your SQL server in your domain. And so it, it will give back to you. You can get GPP password, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, I wrote a, a tool that draws the edit uh, topology, like Active Dir Directory topology diagram. You have also different tool uh, to bypass UAC to uh, provoke BSOD, which is actually very interesting because by doing this, if you be, if you are able to retrieve this BSOD, you will be able to get password from this uh, BSOD file uh, by feeding it to Perl memory. So this is the main menu. Um, you can reveal memory password, uh, try local escalation attempt, which is very interesting when you are in a hotel and you want to, uh, es to escalate your right in a computer you find in, in the business hall, I don't know. Uh, it will use different, different, different technique and try to escalate automatically. You can get McAfee password. Uh, it's a technique. So Jerome Nokin shows us um, the key used by McAfee in sitelist.xml. Uh, and the same day, me and uh, Armjoy published a script in PowerShell, a port in PowerShell to, to be able to, uh, to retrieve the password from these files. Uh, you can uh, make an Active Directory assessment, scan services network, get all the tickets to, uh, to be cracked by Kerberos technique, and get fun with WinMine, so to solve Minesweeper. Okay, so um, I told you that I used um, a Microsoft Debugger. Um, so I will show you basic uh, thing about the debugger, and you will be able to understand uh, the technical part after that. So Jeffress Nova, which uh, created PowerShell, which, uh, which was Monad, uh, say us, okay, automate all the things. So I decided to automate the debugger to get password from memory to hack Microsoft. Um, but why using the Microsoft debugger? Because it's signed. You know, it's, it's, it, it's uh, signed with a certificate from Microsoft. So it, it, it is trusted, you know? Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, it's trusted everywhere, um, which is very interesting because it will force Defender to look for behavior and not just for signature or, or you know, by example, uh, when you lock PowerShell activities, you will be able to look for a lot of strings which is used by actual and current uh, PowerShell tools like uh, if you use Invoke Mimikatz, by example, in the logs, you will have a lot of very interesting things for the defenders. Uh, here, you won't have that. You, you, will, you will see some bytes which, will, uh, which uh, are sent. So the first step is, okay, well, how to use that? So you can, you can type DB to display bytes, and you will have bytes like that. You can use uh, uh, DW to display two bytes, DD to display four bytes. Display un if, you, if you want to look inside a, a, a memory uh, position and to look the Unicode character, you can do DU at, the, at an address in the memory. And I did that uh, in a portion of the memory which contains my email. So you will see directly uh, in, uh, great information. If you do that on a, a portion of memory which contains a password, you will have some non-understandable characters because you, you have to decrypt it. So it's not just du, blah, 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 and it works. Uh, yes, if you want to do that, the first thing you have to do is to uh, load the symbols. If you don't do that, you will try dd and some symbols uh, sorry, yes, symbols, and you will have lo a lot of quotation mark, which means that, okay, I don't know where is this symbol is, is in the memory. So 
you load the symbols, you repeat the same thing, and you will have your bytes. Uh, what is symbols? When you compile a program, you will generate a PDB file for your program, and you can you know, do a lot of things. Microsoft uh, do the same things and publish on, uh, on one of, on, of some servers uh, all the symbols for all the tools and operating system. And CDB or WinDBG, which is the Microsoft Debugger, is very cool because it will load correct uh, symbols for your dump, okay? So symbols are free. You can, you can just uh, take it with the debugger. So maybe you, if you are uh, in the blue team, you want to look for this uh, get, you know, things, HTTP request, because it's maybe not normal. Or, or it's normal, because if you have developers, they will use it. So to get password, you will need uh, several symbols depending uh, of your operating system. So um, the password in the memory are contained into a list entry. And what, wh how do, so it's a, a double circular list entry, and each element is linked together in a in nice loop. So you have to, if you have, I, I don't know, if, if you have like five users connected, you have to uh, go through each element to get all the credential information. And uh, so this list is contained at this uh, symbol's address, which is LLOXS list. So you will type DB LLOXS list. For the key, on NT5 operating system, uh, you will have the DSX key, and um, you will be able to uh, get the key which encode your password and the feedback. For the key on NT6 and NT10, it's H3 DSX key and AES key, and the initialization vector. Um, but we need to go deeper. So we, we will get technical, and after that, you will be able to understand exactly where are the bytes to steal to be able to reverse as a password. So it's in the user land, obviously, and the provider, the authentication provider that we will uh, attack, it's a Dajo security uh, support provider. Why? Because so yes, it's implemented for LDAP protocol, but also for web authentication. And when your user in a corporate environment use SharePoint, by example, they will need it. So for all, every, every SSO uh, single sign-on application, they will use it. So it's a very interesting provider, and it is actually very simple to reverse. So. Uh, if you, if you want more information, I put the link of the Digest uh, security support provider. So it's really used everywhere. And Microsoft made some improvements. So before, uh, if you log off completely, uh, your information stayed in, into the memory. But now when you log off, it's, it, it, doesn't, uh, it, doesn't still, it, it doesn't stay in memory. So you want to get a password. Okay, so you, you have to steal uh, very uh, specific bytes. Um, and you have different possibilities to do that. You can simply dump the LSAS process, and you can do it locally or remotely. You can convert a neighbor file.sys to dump file, and then you, you, you give it to per memory. You can provoke a BSOD, but it will be maybe detected. Uh, and yes, you can do it by leveraging the, the, the hypervisor, like Hyper-V or VMware. I will show you that thing is very interesting. Uh, also, if you have kernel access, you can access directly the LSAS uh, process without doping anything. Yes, I say hypervisor. So you are an Hyper-V operator or a VMware operator, and you are not still domain admin. Seriously? Uh, imagine you have uh, no, absolutely no right in uh, Windows operator, so, some DC domain controller in the domain. So you have absolutely no right. 
you are just a Microsoft Hyper-V operator or VMware, VMware operator that can dump a, a virtual machine. So yes, it, if, you, if you want to do that on, by example, Hyper-V, you can use live KD, I don't know if you can see that, so live KD.exe, which is a tool created by Mark Rusinovich uh, from Microsoft, which wrote a lot of uh, great sysinternal tools. Uh, so you will uh, put live KD.exe, some uh, parameters on the DC, by example, where you have absolutely no write. You have the dump, you feed it into per memory and you get the password. So it could be a problem. And, but it's, for Microsoft, it's not a security problem because you, you are you know, behind a computer which have access, so it's, it's not a security problem. Uh, it works for containers too, because when you launch containers into the memory, uh, from in a, into a host, you will have a new LSAS process created and you have all the access on, on the, the host machine. So the same thing, and you will get the password. So can you see the password? Because he is, uh, yes, over there. Can you see it? It's the same thing, where's Waldo, you know? But I told you that I will show you how to get it. So um, I will show you precisely, so it's, it's a Windows 2008 R2 dump of LSAS process, it, but per memory works from uh, 2003 to 2016 and from XP to uh, 10. So uh, obviously the bytes are not exactly at the same place, but the, the concept is the same for all the operating, the, this operating system. Uh, so it's a linked list, double circular linked list. So the, the first information over there is the next entry in the linked list. This one is a previous entry in the linked list. This one is this address, the current address. Uh, it's a LUID, um, LUID it's a 64-bit it's um, that is uh, value that is guaranteed to be unique uh, until the next reboot and on, you, on the system you are. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, guaranteed only until the system is restarted. But not very interesting uh, to, to get password. Uh, it's a username address. Uh, so you can, actually you can type du and this address and you will have the username. NetBIOS and the encrypted password in red. So if you type du, you, will, you won't get nothing interesting, just an encrypted thing. The domain name address, du, blah, 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 and you have the domain name address in clear text. Uh, the username and domain address, uh, max length and min length of the field, which is interesting, obviously, if you want to automate the thing. Uh, it's not enough. You, you have, okay, you have all the information, but you have an encrypted password. So you, you, will, you want to use uh, some other uh, symbols like db, dd, sorry, uh, and then L S A S R uh, V uh, exclamation point and uh, the, the symbols. Um, you you will you will have the presentation on the Black Hat uh, website after the talk, so you you will be able to to retrieve it. So if you type that, you will get this block of memory. You will type the next uh, address D D and the Z address. You will uh, have some. Well, Okay, so the size is in red. I think it is the size because I, I, I did a lot of empirical approach, so may, I think it's the size. Uh, in yellow, you have the uh, tag KSSM. It's always the same thing, so it's good uh, reference. And then same thing, so tag MSS key. And in pink, it's the key you, you, you look for. And if you type just uh, because it's very useful for the, the AS algorithm after that. If you type DB, you will have uh, the key in, uh, in the good format, which is little and end. So you have the key, you have the, the information, the password encrypted, it's not enough. You need the, init the initialization vector. So uh, yes, it's very complicated. You type D, 
B and the correct symbols and you get it uh, immediately. So with all this information, uh, in a very simple algorithm, you will be able to get the password in clear text. I will show you that in a demo. Okay, so I'm on a 2016 uh, server. So it's a menu, reveal password. Okay, uh, do you want you, uh, to use Active Directory commandlet? If you do that, it will try to match the user you found with uh, an actual user in the domain and will get the right of the user. But if you don't want to be detected, you are not, it's not mandatory, you know? So you can say no, I want to get password locally. Uh, it was a fun thing if you want to exfiltrate data to paste bin, but <laughs> it's not something you want to do every time. And uh, do you want to clear event log? So uh, it will just replace, you know, the event log with you by stopping different thing and elevate himself, etc. And then, okay, getting valuable information and you get the password, which is password three, because password three is more secure than password one. It's over there. And all these uh, weird characters is um, a computer key, which is not a password. But it's contained into the same link list. Thanks. So um, with the same concept in user land, you can inject a shell code in a remote process and execute it. But I don't want to use a Microsoft API. So, so to launch normally the process, you have to you know, use certain uh, several uh, API call, and I don't want to use it. I just want to use uh, the same concept, so sending bytes and receiving bytes. So you need different information. You want a memory executable zone, a null padding zone in the memory to inject your shell code in, and the address. If you have all this information, you can run your, your application, uh, your, your malicious one or not malicious. So uh, to do that, you need to parse the PE dynamically into the in the memory. Uh, you will get the, the address. So I, I will uh, make different step to be able to do that. So th the first thing you, you have will be the, the address of the module loaded to inject. After that, you will get the uh, PE header address uh, that we, you will find in the MS-DOS header. Uh, so I, I give you where, where it is. Uh, I wrote a white paper which will be published also on the, on the website, we, website of uh, Black Hat. So you will, you will have more details on, on the different operation and, and the code is also on the internet. Uh, from the PE header, which is 24 bytes, you will get the size of the optional headers in bytes. And from this optional header, the section blah, 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 etc. And from the section table, the virtual size, virtual address, and raw data pointer. And with all this information, after injected your code into the null padding zone, you will just send this call to the debugger, which is, in fact, uh, saying, okay, the next instruction, because it's a registering instruction pointer, uh, will be this module address. And bam, you will get your calculator. Um, in this example, it's calculator, but it could be uh, uh, also different things. So I will show you a demo, a demo, sorry. Okay, so in power memory, you have power process. Um, Okay, I will launch a notepad.exe. It's not me. <laughs> so you can inject uh, shellcode in process. Uh, you, you give your process name, which is in this case notepad, sorry, .exe. Okay, so and you have it. So if you want to see where it is contained, 
uh, it's Process Explorer from Max Sinovich 2, okay, Notepad, and you have your calculator here. So it works. Uh, thanks. So let's continue with that. Uh, now in kernel land, which is pretty cool, if you want to do things in the kernel land, you will, uh, you will, uh, you will have to start with something. Microsoft uh, put uh, into all the operating system a tool called bcdedit.exe, and by using this tool, you can say, okay, uh, next time you reboot, you will reboot in debug mode. Um, so by using that, you can do a lot of things with the debugger. Uh, obviously, you can, uh, you can protect that uh, by using different uh, techniques, which is well known, but um, personally, I don't see, uh, I, don't, I didn't see a lot of uh, company protecting that. So you can, you can try it, it's interesting. So you, we, we will hide the process. And it's not a new technique, but the, the way we, we, we will did it, so using a PowerShell automating the debugger, it's pretty new. Uh, so to, to be able to hide the process from the heap process uh, list, you want to do that. So we break all the link of this process, which is your process you want to hide. And then, yes, we, maybe we cannot see it very well, but uh, we, you will say to, uh, to the debugger, okay, now I want that you do that. Okay. And then the same thing, I want that you do, do that, so the process are well linked. But it's not enough. If you just do that, uh, you will experiment uh, like three seconds later, a uh, BSOD, a crash. So you want to make also this thing, link this process to itself, and this thing. So we, we autom I automated uh, that uh, with PowerShell and the debugger. I will show you that. So I take the same thing. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. So I launched Notepad. I like Notepad. You saw, can you see Notepad? Okay, over there. And I want to hide it. So it's in pro process, you have different thing. And if you want to hide a process, you say, okay, hide me, please. Hide me, I want that you hide this process. So you saw, okay, it found the, okay, it, it just disappeared by using this technique. And if you want to unhide, I wrote the, the unhide part two. You need the, this address because, okay. You saw, did you saw KD, KD.exe? Okay, and notepad is here again. So it works with the same concept. So you can do a lot of things because it's a rootkit, you know. Okay. Okay. Now um, you want. Uh, sorry. You want um, a real case. Um, and to to show that you could or do some real uh, red team or real case. I, uh, I made a pull request for PowerShell Empire, but as you know, they had a lot of, uh, the, a lot of things happened with ATD uh, lastly, so they, they did not integrate uh, yet. Um, so Empire is a PowerShell framework that you can use to do some red team activities and it will basically launch um, an agent with PowerShell and give you the possibility to, to do all what you need to, to accomplish your red team or, so, or your attack. And um, so, yes, um, they, they said, okay, we, we, you, 
We don't necessarily use PowerShell.exe, but if you try to automate with you know, the, the 1.6 uh, version of um, uh, Empire, if you try to um, obfuscate your activity with MS Build, by example. So with MS Build, which is another Microsoft tool, you can load an XML file which contains uh, a, a C sharp code and launch your agent into the MS Build. So you, you won't see PowerShell.exe, but with, this, with the, the Empire framework, when you will launch another attack through your agent, it will launch another PowerShell process. So you, you, want, you, know, you, you will see again the PowerShell process. So the pull request is 298. And to be able to do that, the first thing you have to do is, by example, be fishy and explain to the user you have to click on that thing. I don't know. Then uh, the target loads the Empire agent. And through it, uh, you load pro memory into the target machine memory. So it will run into the memory. You drop the sign debugger or use an existing one. If you target correctly, you can find different debuggers that you can use too. Then you make fun and profits. And six, you go to J. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a, a demo for that. Um, so OK, you are here. Uh, Oh, sorry. OK, so we have no, no agent. So be fishy. I think I have uh, something to just show you. Uh, OK, it's not on this computer. Uh, OK, I'll show you that. So I launch another another server. But normally on DC one, I have something to. Okay, it's not it's not there. I don't know why. On documents. Okay, sorry about that. But I did some, you know, uh, video in case it, it does not work. Uh, so, password three, yeah. Okay, so here yeah, it's uh, just a uh, basic launcher. So I have my agent. Um, so you want to get credentials. The tools is called R W M C R S, and you the info that you need to to get is just the agent, which is already the case. So you can type run. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know why it does not work now, but uh, okay, I did that. Sorry. So you you type run. And normally, OK, yes, it was not. You will get something like that. Sorry, it's not, it's not the, the GIF. So basically, it will drop your uh, debugger, and it will send uh, some bytes, and you will get all different passwords like that. So it, it's pretty cool, because here it's a, a domain administrator. Um, Okay. So mitigation. Um, yes, uh, as I said, the big difference between this kind of technique and uh, technique like directly using PowerShell or another dropper, because a lot of uh, uh, security people say, "Okay, I will, I will inject some." thing into the memory directly and it's completely fileless or I will inject something in the memory and, and hide it uh, into the memory but every time you, you need to have a, a file 
You know, you send an email, or you send something which will drop something, or you, 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 you put a, a thing on the disk, and then this thing is not malicious, but it will, uh, it will say to the malicious uh, thing, okay, do that, do this, do that, and we'll call some different APIs that in Blue Team you will see. So here, the idea is, okay, just put something which is trusted, and then automated it with bytes. So if you are uh, in the blue team, you have to look for behavior. You know, signature is not, uh, it's not uh, enough in this case. You have to look for dumping activities. Uh, and I wrote uh, services, which is cool, which can uh, uh, look for Elsa's dumping and which process did it. Uh, I don't understand why Microsoft do, didn't uh, do that, because Elsas normally you don't have to dump it, if, you know, for normal activities. Uh, look also for suspicious bcdedit.exe uses, because uh, normally, you know, I don't know if you are an accountant, you won't use uh, that. Don't trust the endpoint uh, defense mechanisms. So uh, you have some great uh, new tools like, uh, I don't know, Tenium, Silence, Carbon Black, et cetera. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not enough. You really uh, have to look for and, and hunt for suspicious behavior. And yes, look for suspicious user tools behavior. So at Deloitte, we do a lot of things. And basically, the thing is to say, OK, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when you will be attacked. So you have to protect, you have to know where is your crown jewels, where is your uh, very important information. Uh, you, you want to proactively assess your risk. Um, you will build a multi-layer defense, fortify your organization, and prepare you, yourself for the inevitable. Um, so the, the, the takeaways of this talk are, OK, basic SIM, so you, you know what is a SIM. It's something uh, you used to uh, automate uh, different uh, hunting activities, like hunting, uh, automate logs, pass, passes, and look for suspicious things. But in this case, it will, it will be not enough. So, Basic SIM use case today with a correct version of PowerShell can detect your invoke mimic cat lo loading into the memory, by example, uh, because it will use uh, a lot of things which is very suspicious, like .NET uh, download string. Everybody knows that. And uh, if you use that, we will take a look at that. Use public symbols to get memory address. Microsoft gave you the possibility to know all the information of the operating system and application. Take it, it's free. You can play in user land and in kernel land with this technique. And the last thing, look at uh, the pull request to know how it, it was implemented and to be able to do the, th the same thing. And before completing, completing the talk, I will show you uh, something which is pretty cool. Um, sorry. Um, if I, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. It's a famous game. So I have a mind sweeper solver, and I want to be able to, to win, because I love to win. But I never played to this game before that. And you have a lot of things. You can flag the bombs, like in the normal game. You can demine the bombs. You can reveal the bombs, explode the bombs. You have a 42 option, and you, you can clean the board. If I try option 6, clean the board, by example. OK, so primary detect, OK, it's a 30 times 16 uh, uh, board, so I will refresh. And OK, it just removed all the bombs. 
So now I click. Yeah. <laughs> I won. That's cool. Oh. Okay. Ah, oh, I just changed. Sorry. Thank you very much for attending this talk. It was a pleasure for me. If you, if you want to ping me, it's my Twitter and my GitHub where you will find a lot of interesting other things. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so uh, the question is, what is the difference between red and blue team? So the red team basically is uh, a team, you know, that uh, will try to offensively attack an organization to prove, you know, some uh, 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 come on, so flaws or uh, weakness into the organization. So it's, it's something we do in, at Deloitte. And the, the concept is, OK, nobody into the organization will, be, will know that we, we do that, only one person. Okay? So all the, the, the other team, the security team, won't, be able, won't know that. And uh, so we will act like a real attacker. We, we, we don't want to you know, uh, make a pen test. So the goal is not to test all the, possi the possibilities in the weakness of the organization, but only to get in. And easier, it's better. And blue team is a defense part, so it's exactly the same, but in the other, uh, in the other part, you know. Uh, so the question is: uh, Is the red team is authorized to do that? Yes, it's uh, it's we are authorized because it's you know a, a client, but uh, with uh, strict restrictions. So you don't you 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 don't want to affect. Uh, the production or things like that. So, you know, not DDoS things or certain things like that. <laughs> yeah? So, uh, in one of your demos, when you were uh, launching the cloud memory, yeah. you were already in Lossian as an administrator, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So if I understand correctly, you asked, uh, as, um, am I the admis an administrator on the target computer? Yeah, yeah I, I am. And that's why I, uh, I wrote you know, the auto-escalation things. But yes, the concept is you have to be an administrator or just have the debug right. So you can be a normal user without administrative right, but having the debug uh, right, you will be able to do that. Or if you are just a VMware operator, you know, you don't have to be anything on the on the target machine. So basically, you're saying uh, if it's if it's an normal user and I'm able to download the debugger, then I will automatically have administrative rights through the debugger. So uh, the question is, if I'm a normal user. Uh, can I just you know download the debugger? No, you have to be you have to to get some uh, specific rights. So you have to be administrator or have debug right. But if you are normal user and you know in addition you are uh, uh, not administrator on VMware but operator and you have the right to you know make some file operation and downloading file operation, you will be able to get the password without having any right in the computer, the target computer. Yeah. When you talked about uh, high performance. Yeah. In yeah. Um, you said that uh, if you just uh, fix your uh, forward and backward links, uh, you'll get a good. Yeah. I'm not sure why I guess. Yeah, because it's, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was critical. Uh, architecture um, error or something like that. In, uh, actually, uh, it's because the, the kernel will check again, okay, this 
structure, which is a e-process structure, is not linked to anything. It's not normal I crash, you know, because in normal operation it will be the same. The, it it says basically that the, the operating system is corrupted because it's not normal that uh, e-process structure is not linked to anything else. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, am I right in thinking that we still have the two caveats, i.e., right? firstly, we won't be able to pass the command line argument onto because you're injecting the PE shell version, and secondly, uh, you can't have, for example, a, a, a two stage uh, payload because of the limitation of the inject, uh, of the shell of the execution, and we'll be able to call more things and load it. Okay. So if I understand correctly, you said that uh, when I try to inject something and execute it in a remote process, I need to uh, first uh, uh, inject with the parameters and arguments. Can you, can you, can you uh, in the example, you, you, you load it as a cow? Okay, yeah. No, the, the only thing I did was to, okay, the first thing is you have to pass uh, dynamically, so the memory in-memory process, so you have to get the, the base module object and then all the thing. The first thing is that by just sending, uh, you know, uh, bytes. So you will see only bytes, and then you receive other bytes. And you need to write uh, other bytes, which is actually, uh, in in this case, a calculator, so calc.exe uh, information. And then to to be able to launch it, you will just say to the RIP. Uh, register, which is a register instruction pointer, you know, for the processor, you will say, okay, next time you will launch this address. That's all that I did. So I didn't call any API, you know. Obviously, the API will, won't, uh, will be called by the, the debugger, but you won't do it with your executable or your uh, script or anything you use to do that. Uh, yeah, I, I I look for that. I didn't publish that because it yes, it's not it's not something. But um, actually, I didn't show you that uh, for the system things. I retrieve empirically the system hash, which is currently exactly the same on all machine and operating system. So if you get that, you will be able to be system on any computer. But no, I, I didn't get the NTLM ashes, but I get it into the registry, you know, but not in, uh, in the memory for the proof of concept. But yes, you, you could do that too. And you could also attack other provider, you know, authentication provider. Here I just attacked the digest one, but you can uh, attack other provider too. Yeah. So what's the main difference between using this method and say dumping the memory through the hash instead of parsing that offline and the Yeah, you, you can do also that. So uh, uh, it's exactly the same thing, uh -huh. but uh, you it's it will be difficult to dump uh, remotely, you know. Remotely you won't be able to do that. So uh, here I automate it also remotely. So if you are in a 10,000 uh, computers domain, you can do that for uh, all the computers too. Oh, okay, so yeah. Okay. And the goal was to show, yeah, okay, how can we do that through all the different possibilities and like, uh, you know, Hyper-V and VMware things too, which is the same concept again and again uh, and manipulate, you know, memory, writing it to the memory with the same concept and so just with the debugger. So now, uh, I assume that you, if you are in a blue team, you, you, you want to look after this kind of behavior. Yeah. So, sorry, I didn't. So the question is, do you need a debug mode to hide process? Uh, yeah, because it's, it's in the kernel mode. So you, you need it. So for all kernel things you, you could imagine, DCOM, etc., you need debug mode. Uh, debug mode, you know, uh, BCD edit, etc. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? 
Oh, okay, thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>